So in 2017, Ryan, who's on the foundation board, he had just went through our peer support class for the Kansas City, Kansas Fire Department. I opened up to him out on the golf course of all places. We just went through all the training and we were just talking and some of the stuff he was saying, you know, problems at home and that kind of thing, we're hitting a bunch of boxes that we just went over in the peer support training. I told him I had just blew up at my son the night before and I had done that to my family my daughter and wife several times over the years and I didn't know what was changing me, what was making me be that way. And This is a culmination of your 20 plus years of being on the fire department and all the stuff you see is you're taking it home with you and it's affecting your personal life and that just kind of snowballed into you know him being aware of what is affecting him and then once he got that under wraps he will wanted to see what he could do to help other people and that's kind of where the whole foundation came about. 2017 to 2020, 2020 is when I started the social media blitz to bring the awareness of what my story is and to hopefully help first responders stop dying by suicide, ruining families with the anger management and hypervigilance like I have. So my self-awareness journey for those three years before I started Firefighter Golf, which was the social media, YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and all that to bring awareness. Then I, I met a, through social media, a golf pro in Kansas City and he said, let's do something for first responders because we already do it for military through the PGA Hope. And I said, yes, let's do. I, I'd love to include all first responders. So COVID was around, long story short, I just went ahead and applied for the 501c3 not-for-profit and got it approved. I've hosted tournaments. We've hosted these retreat trips now for three years. And that's the story of growing into the foundation and just trying to get the awareness out there that this is a real thing. Well, it first started out just being supportive of a friend and I thought an outstanding idea. You know, I thought it's something that needed to be done. You know, reaching the fire and police community is something that's not addressed like the military is, but yet the suicide rate amongst police officers and firefighters is just as high. So it started out as that, but then once we've, I've got into this and uh, through Steve's research and meeting people and doing the things that we've done, I've realized my own issues I've had and the way I've interacted with people, some of my anger issues, some of the things, the stresses I take home to my family and how I treat them. And it's just made me more aware of things on a personal level that I can make myself better. So it's just a, it's a good time and not only that, but the community behind it to be out here with the other first responders and, and getting to know other people that have been through the same things that you've been through. You know, it's good for me to be around a lot of like-minded people. For example, this this retreat just sitting around the fire talking and sharing stories the general bond it doesn't matter what city you're from what part of the country you're from you know it's crazy that you have that bond even though you've only met, I met some of these guys four hours ago and it's like we've known each other for years so. to promote mental awareness for first responders which is very very important uh, we see a lot of things that the average person has not ever seen in their life they may see it on tv but not we've seen some of these things in real life and it does have a profound effect on us as first responders um, we try not to take those things home to our families but sometimes it does follow golf has been a and and a tool that is used where you can come out as these states, you can decompress and play golf and talk amongst people that have been through some of the same things that we have. I've gotten to meet other first responders from different departments, different jobs, which has been phenomenal because it's, you, you get to see that a lot of the same things that I go through, they go through, even though we're doing different jobs, we still see a lot of the same stuff. Just get stuff off your chest that's, that's sometimes hard to deal with and that you know they it, and sometimes talking to people within your own organization it, it, it can be hard sometimes so being able to go outside that has been phenomenal foundation is gives an opportunity for us first responders a little four or five hour break out of our day opportunity play golf with some good people it gives us all a way to kind of let go of some emotion or it's a friends and it 
new friends as we go along into this progression of the, the foundation. But for me, it's it's got me I'm out here golfing with a bunch of guys that I become good friends with, and you can let all let all the stuff you hide keep away. You can talk about it because these guys all they dealt with it, so they they understand what you you're, you're going through or 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 not going through. And you, you know you get a, a shoulder for somebody else that needs a bit. You know they understand you. There's no judgment. You know like, challenges might be small, they might be big, but. Everybody's got something. What this foundation means to me, Steve has done some incredible things with this foundation. Peer support, PTSD support. Uh, I met Steve at a veterans and first responder golf event uh, out here actually in the valley. He told me a lot about his foundation. I actually, he actually texted, does anybody want to golf the day before the thing? And I did, and uh, the foundation paid for me. And I was like, oh wow, okay. So I instantly paired up with Steve. And, uh, and then we went on to do another three days of the golf camp, which uh, we really got to share some um, our personal lives and get to know each other a little better. You know, firemen and f firewomen, we just have a bond and a connection that is like no other. So to be able to take it out here on the golf course uh, where you can really have camaraderie, doing something you love that's peaceful, it's awesome. I'm here because my old friend and mentor in the wildland fire world, Andy Parker, called and he was going to attend and asked if I would attend with him. I talked to Steve Pope about it. I am so glad that they both convinced me to come. My wife researches everything and I was diagnosed with uh, uh, cancer and in her searching for answers for everything, she came across the foundation and she emailed that to me. I looked at it, sounded interesting, so I responded to them through contact me, and Steve Pope, the founder, gave me a call, and we talked for at least 45 minutes. I felt very comfortable talking with him. I've never met him. I decided the foundation was something that I wanted to support, not only personally, but if possible, financially. I played golf since I was eight years old. Uh, my grandfather introduced me to the game back then. I fell in love with it. I played golf and baseball my whole life. Uh, once my body broke down, I couldn't play baseball anymore. Golf's the sport I took for my competitive outlet. I'm that kind of type A competitive person, so I have to have something to uh, give me that competitive juice, and now golf's that. So it's just a passion. I love it. I mean, I'm, my wife teases me that I'm married to the game and not her. I mean, I've, I've been playing golf since I was 14 years old, always had a passion for it. It was something my father passed down to me. Uh, golf has always been a passion for me, even back to days when I used to run amateur golf in Kansas City back in the early 2000s. It's been a passion of mine because I love to play. I love the outdoors, the nature, the different courses, that different parts of the country you go to. Each course has its own individuality about it. And once I started working for the police department, stress factors go up exponentially. I needed to find an outlet. Some people work out, stuff like that. I went with something that I was familiar with, which is playing golf. I'm not a everyday golfer, obviously, and I'm out here and my score's not the best, but having fun and this has given me an opportunity to kind of excel at that. And some more rounds in, I would never be out here on a trip like this if it weren't for Steve and the foundation. And um, I started golfing at seven. I did golf in high school and college. You wouldn't be able to tell that today, but I quit when I moved out here to the golf capital of the world because I was just a lowly firefighter. I couldn't afford it. But I started golfing again about four years ago, and um, I just love this game so much. I've been playing a long time, and I've, where I moved to retire was to play more golf. And so, yes, golf's important, but the thing about golf is you come out here and you're, you're you're with these guys and you, you kind of break down those barriers that strangers always have when they first meet and you're playing the camaraderie. Uh, I know that word's a little overused, but it's, it is a good word. And, and you just get relaxed. And I, I think, I don't think it would be the same if it weren't for the golf. Well, first of all, uh, I'm like every other golfer. I hate it, but I try to play at least every day. Sought out mental health care and after talking with Steve I decided he invited me to this golf retreat and I I thoroughly enjoyed it 
I, I played golf throughout my career as much as I could, but being a wildland firefighter, I, I was away from home at least most of the summer, 110, 120 days a year. So it didn't leave a whole lot of time for golf. But since I've retired, I've tried to catch up. So these retreat trips are, are about being, just being, brotherhood and sisterhood, sharing a meal together, getting to know each other on a deeper basis because out there on the golf course for four and a half hours, man, you can get to know someone. They might open up to you. And it's not what it's about necessarily opening up. Um, we love that, but it's more about the brotherhood, sisterhood, being, playing golf, using that game to help you decompress and recalibrate, help you be self-aware that you could be having some problems that you didn't know about or in the future, hey, Steve's right, his foundation is right. So that's what it's about. That's what they're gonna get out of this, is the camaraderie using the game of golf. That's also the coolest thing. Like last retreat was the first year we really had people from other states meet us out here, which is kind of shows how the foundation has grown, not just in the Kansas City metro area, but national, South Carolina, Georgia, Oregon, really from coast to coast now, which is pretty awesome. Well, it's, I've entered, it's introduced me to people that I would have never been introduced to. I have friends now from coming on these retreats and, and gaining that camaraderie. I mean, I still talk to guys that we went on last year's retreat. I didn't know those guys until the first day I met them on the retreat. And now I text them and I talk to them still. So it's, it's opened avenues to meet people that I would have never met. And I hope to do the same on this, you know, we're meeting people on this trip that I've never met. And I hope to continue friendships on after this. Yeah, first time out on the retreat, loving it so far. I mean, Steve and Brian and First Responder Golf Foundation, I, I can't think of enough for the opportunity to come out and experience this. The sense of community to, to be with other first responders and maybe not even talk about our experiences, but just you can relate to them so well, even though you don't really know each other. And then also an opportunity to experience new golf courses, a new environment, and just getting away from the day-to-day -day stressors and decompressing to hear some of the stories that we hear. Everybody's stories are gonna be the same, but they will be a little bit different. And it kind of brings us together, camaraderie rise. We sit down and we float bread together. You get to know these guys on a more personal level and you understand their passion for what they do for a living. It's been a lot of fun bonding with the fellas. The fellas have been a lot of fun. We've had a great time, just a great adventure. I would love to do these in the future. It has far exceeded my expectations. Like I said, it's just the, the camaraderie, being able to sit down at a dinner table, have discussions with the other first responders. Well, it's been a great experience. And as far as uh, camaraderie, fellowship, there's nothing like it. We've been together for a day and a half and spent some good quality time together, uh, get, getting to meet some people from around the country, people I've never met with. Uh, I made the comment last night that Spent 24 hours with these guys and feel like I've worked with them for 10 years. This is my first retreat on the foundation. Obviously, I hope to come back maybe more. This is the last. Uh, you know, we, we said we talked to Andy and we had some of his bomb thought and fire experiences and, and things he's done and seen. And, and it's a whole other aspect of, you know, the fire industry that we don't think about as being interior firefighters. You know, to let him tell some of his stories, we're, you know, it just it broadened the horizon. I'm uh, somewhat shocked being with all the other guys out here. It has been wonderful sharing our stories as firefighters and police and law enforcement and some of the trials and tribulations and pressures that we all have experienced. And it, it gives a, it, it helps you kind of work through a lot of those issues you may have. It means a lot. It means a lot to see my friend Andy. Don't know how many more times I'm going to get to see him being in South Carolina. And he's in Oregon and has some uh, pretty severe health issues going on. I, I was shocked because generally uh, when you find people from the same department, they, they tend to stick together. But they welcomed me and, and it's like I've known them for a long, long time. We, we talked at night found out more about these people who uh, are talking to me. Last night, I told them 
the reason I was here and what I expected to get out of it, and it's exceeded my expectations. So here's something I would tell a possible donor. First responders live society's trauma, and we take that home to our families. And that's a real thing, because they live the trauma too. My wife would say, we prefer when you're at work, when I was going through my crisis. And that's powerful. That's a powerful thing, and I never, it never registered with me when she was telling me that, because I was going through what I was going through. So that's what I would tell a donor is, we live society's trauma, and your, your donation is gonna help a first responder become a better first responder for you as a citizen, when we run calls, as well as our family members. And to me, that's, that's a powerful thing, to be better for the men and women that we also work with, the citizens that we serve, and then our families. I think you just take a look at this year's retreat. It's the perfect scenario of why we're doing this. We have a firefighter that was a retired wildland firefighter that is recently being diagnosed with stage four cancer, terminal cancer. He has no idea how long he's gonna be here. He reached out to our foundation and asked if he could come on one of these retreats with us. He's seen the videos that we've put out in the past and it was that was a no brainer, it was an absolute yes. And then after he did that, his friend who he hasn't seen in several years, who live in opposite sides of the country, reached out to us and said, hey, I would love to come on your retreat if you have room. Again, that was another absolute yes. So we're, we're reuniting these guys for what could possibly be their last time together as best friends, you know, because no long, nobody knows how long he'll be here. And I think that's, that's what this is about. We're putting these two guys together. We're putting other people together. You know, we're going to have a great time. The stress of his diagnosis, he doesn't have to think about that for four days. Just relax and be ourselves, become friends. You know, I would say that supporting your first responders before there's an issue and giving them an opportunity to come out and decompress is a force multiplier. So if you can get a good first responder and a good mindset, they're going to be able to help multiple people down the road. So it's invaluable really not only to that first responder, but also your community because those first responders are going to be out to be able to go out and perform their job better because they've had an opportunity to maybe offload some of the traumas that they've experienced. It's very rewarding to be able to donate and watch these guys unwind and just leave it all behind. If you had the time to not only donate but come spend time with these guys, you'd see what the fire service and police department, first responder network is really all about. It's just a bunch of guys and girls that are willing to put their lives on the line to help their community and just to kind of watch them unwind is pretty rewarding no matter how much money you donate. To any organization, company, that is interested in supporting this organization, approximately 97% of all funds go straight to the cause. There are not a bunch of guys out having fun, spending your money. There are a group of people with a board of directors that watch the funds, provide them as needed, and are oftentimes recruited for some of the darkest times in a young firefighter's life. And I encourage anybody that has an extra nickel to an extra hundred dollars to it. Man, just think what you would be doing for your community by supporting this organization. The benefit to this, I mean, is, I mean, you, you can't expect it. You know, for me, like, they're all, we're all tribes. Disregard how horrific it may be. And we have to, and people see us laughing, and they're like, oh, God, they're laughing, they're laughing. It's like, we have to, because we have to tell Joe, we have to do so, because if we don't, I mean, we'll, we'll, I mean, maybe I'll cry since crying all night because of the hell that we see. And doing something like this, getting, being able to get away from it, and just resetting is, it's just, it's a measure. It, it, it makes going to work next week fine. Well, you should know that mental health with first responders is a, it's a real issue. The stresses and daily life, I always say it, I see a lot of trauma in our job and this is a great outlet for, for all of us. Gives, a, gives an option for people to 
help relieve some of that stress. They need to realize truly what they're doing. Like, I would I would invite somebody to come enjoy one of these retreats to maybe experience it to get a firsthand knowledge of what exactly this foundation is and what it does for others. And um, if, if you're considering it, don't hesitate. Steve will make it happen. This foundation helps firefighters and police officers find resources. You're able to talk about things that you can't, you just don't share with people who aren't in this job. And there's something about the golf course that allows people to just, I mean, this is where most business deals are done, so why wouldn't this be where most uh, quality conversations can happen if you have so much in common and you love this game and you do the same thing? Well, the foundation fills a very important gap. And that gap being that you do and see and a lot of things that can really stress people and you have nightmares. There are certain scenes and that never leave your mind, certain events. And so in the government world, they, it's just been very recent years where they started recognizing this. And so they have established some programs, but in a lot of those a lot of jurisdictions, those programs are used, and when you go and use the, your work program, it counts against you on the job and hurts you as far as your career and your promotion. So a lot of people are very hesitant to take advantage of those. Well, here's the foundation where there's no repercussions, it doesn't impact your job, you meet other people sharing similar circumstances and similar issues. And so you, f you feel freer to talk about it, to get the help you need. And there's, this is just an important outlet for first responders to have. So I would encourage people to donate and, and keep this program going. It's very important. It's doing a really good job. In, in uh, first responders, you don't know how it's affected you over a lifetime until somebody that loves you tells you you need help. And the hard part for us is accepting that. I, yes, I do need help. There's 11 people here helping me, actually 12 because of you as well. I have a mental health uh, professional at home that I see. And I'm, I'm becoming more comfortable with me. You, you go to the website and if you are able, to contribute financially to help fund this, I, I encourage you to. Funds go to, to the ground. Very little of this, if any, for management of the foundation. So your donations, whatever it may be, uh, actually help people like me. All right, thanks for watching. Captain Steve Pope here with the First Responder Golf Foundation and the Kansas City, Kansas Fire Department. As you saw, some wonderful first responders being interviewed on our latest retreat trip in Phoenix, Arizona. If you are a first responder and you would like to play golf with the foundation to decompress and recalibrate, if you would like to possibly go on one of these retreat trips, please contact us. To all the potential sponsors, donors, if you would like to do that for your first responders, to help them get out on the golf course and decompress and recalibrate, please contact the foundation and we can get information to you on how you can support our mission. Not only golf, it's an awareness thing that we're trying to do. Talk to first responders when they're starting their career so they can know the signs to look out for. With your donation, it allows us to also partner with some other resources for doctors to get first responders help when they do come to us in a crisis. If you're a first responder, please contact the foundation to get out on the golf course. If you're a potential donor or sponsor, please contact the foundation. Let's help as many as we can by using this wonderful game of golf that I find brings me the, the recalibration that I need when I come home from a, a stressful shift. Anyway, I love you all, stay self-aware, and please reach out.